Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Please stand while I call on the Flagler College Chamber Choir to perform the national anthem. Professor Tazy and students, please remain standing, if you would, for the invocation delivered by Father Ted Voorhees, vicar and pastor of St. Cyprian's Episcopal Church. Father Voorhees. Let us pray. Spirit of life, creator, source of boundless compassion, you are known by many names and you are heard in many voices and languages. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, for the mystery of love, and for the blessing of this day. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. Thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our need of a loving community, supportive friends and family, and the hope of growth and maturity. We ask your blessing upon these graduates as they pursue their dreams. Make them mindful of those on whose shoulders they stand, as well as those who follow in their path. Provide them with the courage to move beyond fear and doubt to find strength in their capacity to care for others and to respect the diversity of humankind. Through your gracious spirit, we ask that you bless them with patience as they explore new horizons. Grant them humility in the face of success and abundance. Open their hearts with compassion for the poor, the sick, and the suffering, and fill them with generosity in the midst of the challenges to come. Help them to stay true to their dreams, to use their gifts wisely, and to walk into the future with faith, hope, and great love. Lastly, we ask your blessing upon us all, family, friends, faculty, mentors, and supporters, as we share in the joy of their accomplishments. We ask all of this in your name. Amen. Thank you, Father Voorhees, and you may be seated. <laughs> On behalf of the Board of Trustees, the administration, the faculty, and the staff of Flagler College, I'm pleased to welcome you to our Fall 2019 Commencement Ceremony. 
first like to introduce my wife Susan, who's over here in the audience, and thank her for her support through, uh, through, through my journey here at Flagler, as well as recognizing and thanking all of our Board of Trustees whose support is, is incredibly important for our work. This commencement marks the conclusion of your academic time at Flagler. Today is your day, students, and I'm so honored to be able to share this momentous occasion with you. Commencement is always an exciting time for our college community, and we're delighted that so many friends and family are here to celebrate this significant occasion, to honor and support the men and women who are graduating today, to salute their achievements, and to give them hope and encouragement as they continue their chosen careers or pursue further education. Members of the class of 2019, I hope that each one of you will treasure this day and this moment and that you'll value it, savor it, and appreciate it. On a personal note, I've enjoyed getting to know over the past two and a half years all of our students, and I've shared many times that my greatest joy as president has been the students. And you're an amazing group, and I'm very, very proud of you and everything that you've accomplished. You've worked hard to meet the requirements and the standards of our college, as well as the expectations of our faculty. On this past Monday, Flagler College received its reaffirmation of accreditation for the next 10 years from the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools, Commission on Colleges. In fact, Flagler was one of six institutions whose focus report and compliance certification were held up as exemplars by the accrediting agency, further affirming the excellence here at Flagler College. Thank you. The diploma that you received today is a symbol of having successfully completed the requirements for a degree from Flagler College. And I'm firmly convinced that every diploma I bestow today is a passport to success and you are well prepared to take your next step. Please accept my heartiest congratulations on your achievement in reaching this graduation day. As I look around this morning, I see a lot of proud family members and friends who have contributed in numerous ways to this occasion. All of you have played important roles in helping the soon-to-be graduates achieve their educational goals through your support, encouragement, and love. I want to sincerely thank you for placing your trust in Flagler College. You obviously have placed a great deal of value on education in your home, and that belief has become a reality today. To our talented students and dedicated faculty and staff, you have demonstrated our faculty your commitment to ensuring that our students receive an excellent education and that they leave our college prepared both academically and as citizens of the world we live in. One element of Flagler College that has consistently stood out as a beacon of light is our faculty. Our faculty and staff truly care about each individual student. I've seen it on countless occasions and it is indeed what distinguishes us. My sincere thanks and please join me in thanking our absolutely fabulous faculty and staff here. So members of the class of 2019, enjoy this moment and take pride in your accomplishment. But as you sit here this morning waiting to receive your diploma, I encourage you to think about those family members, faculty, and staff who've helped you arrive to this place in time. You know, I always like to leave with a quote, uh, but this year, instead of finding one myself, I asked the seniors at our senior soiree to submit a quote that really reflect, reflects their time here at Flagler. My favorite was one sent to me by Gregory Curtis. Gregory, where are you? Raise your hand. Thank you, Gregory. <laughs> who, who shared a quote to me from Nathaniel Hawthorne's The Blythdale Romance, which states, in truth, it was dizzy work amid such fermentation of opinions as was going on in the general brain of the community. It was a kind of bedlam. For the time being, although out of the very thoughts that were wildest, might grow a wisdom, holy, calm, and pure. And that should incarnate itself with the substance of a noble and happy life. Congratulations again to our graduates. God bless all of you, and I wish you continued success.
now my honor to introduce our commencement speaker, Mr. Viv Helwig, Flagler College alumni from the class of 2008. Viv Helwig is the founder and president of Vested Metals International, LLC, a specialty metals and steel distribution company headquartered here in St. Augustine. He started Vested Metals in 2014 after spending five years working for one of the world's largest specialty steel mills, Carpenter Technology Corporation. In 2019, Viv was named to the St. Augustine Records 40 Under 40, Jacksonville Business Journal's 40 Under 40, and JBJ Ultimate CEO list. He was also honored to be named as a Flagler College 50th anniversary, 50 alumni of distinction. In 2019, Vested Metals was named to the prestigious uh, 5, 000, uh, uh, Incorporated 5,000 list as the 324th fastest growing company in America. While Inc. Magazine also dubbed Viv the man of steel in a feature article. Vested Metals was also named Jacksonville Business Journal's Fast 50 as the number seventh fastest growing company in Northeast Florida, as well as the St. John's County Chamber of Commerce Small Business of the Year. Viv currently serves on the Flagler College Athletics Advisory Board, an alumni board of directors, the St. John's County Industrial Development Authority, the St. John's County Chamber of Commerce Public Policy Committee, and the United States Small Business Administration Small Business Development Center at UNF's Business Advisory Board. Viv is a native of Christiana, Jamaica, and grew up in Florida. He currently lives in St. Augustine with his wife of eight years, Brittany, they are proud parents of three children, Amelia, Maxwell, and Calvin. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Vig Helwig to the podium. Thank you, Dr. Joyner. And good morning, Flagler College class of 2019. Good morning, distinguished guests, which includes everyone. When Dr. Joyner asked me to give this speech, I admittedly was shocked. I just looked at him. But he thought that you could relate to my story. I can't wait to share parts of my story with you and hopefully inspire you to follow your dreams. Now, one of the neat perks of speaking today is getting an honorary doctorate degree. And I know I have some former professors that must be sitting here right in front of me thinking, now this is the only way this man was ever getting a doctorate. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Joyner, for giving me this opportunity and taking a risk on me here this morning. And thank you for your servant leadership. So with a smaller graduating class, I'm told the length of this graduation is greatly determined by the commencement speaker. <laughs> so instead of taking up all the extra time, I'll take my friend and our men's basketball coach, Chad Warner's advice, and that is that no one ever complained about a speech being too short. <laughs> thank you to the class of 2019 for letting me speak today. And thank you to all the faculty, staff, administrators, students, and trustees for your dedication to Flagler College. Embracing relationships has always been important to me. So before I get started, I'd like to thank my guests for coming and supporting me. And I hope you hear parts of my story in my brief comments to them. Mr. Mike Robertson, or Mike, Mr. Mike and Ms. Mimi, as our kids affectionately refer to you, thank you for your friendship, kindness, and encouraging me to slay those dragons. Coach Bill Clark. Flagler's legendary men's basketball coach. I spent four years as your student assistant, and I'm sure somewhere along the line I thought about trying out or walking on just to sit on the end of the bench and get a jersey. But the truth is, I never tried out because I already had the best seat right next to you. Thank you. Eric Lamb, my mentor, board member, and friend, you put me in the specialty steel game, and you were never going to let me fail. You've challenged me to get better and truly taught me that all things being equal, people do business with people they like and feel comfortable with. And I appreciate you more than I can express it. My brother, John Horan, we are 10, 20 years plus apart in age, and you're a white surfer city boy from Baltimore, and I'm a black country island boy from the mountains of Jamaica, but we met here as students and have been sharpening each other ever since. Thanks for showing me how to shine my light. My brother, Anthony, 20 years we've been passing, pressing together now. You've shown me how to dream and dream big like beyond boundaries. I'm excited to have a front row seat to the things you have done and will do. My biological brother, Stephen, we had some battles growing up, just being 18 months apart, and we're two very different people, but you're the best man I know. 
and I'm proud of your meteoric rise at Microsoft and the family man, and I'm forever grateful for your deep desire to see me succeed. Mom reminded me that two days after I graduated, I donated my Xbox. I've grown up now. So now, if I want to play video games, I go to my older brother's house. <laughs> I want to thank both my parents as they left their home country of Jamaica in their 40s and immigrated to the United States with two young children. I don't care if it's the same language. That is no easy task in the middle of your life. I'm sure you didn't plan on being a single mom. <clears throat> raising two boys, <clears throat> working three jobs to make ends meet. But the circumstances, circumstances were what they were, and I'm grateful for your sacrifice, your hard work and dedication, and for your commitment to faith. Thank you. <clears throat> my wife, my love, Brittany. I could dream of no greater partner, of no greater mother to our three children, Amelia, Maxwell, and Calvin. You've been unyielding in your support. You've taught me how to fight for relationships that are worth fighting for. You've shown me the true creativity and, what, and empathy, what they look like, and I love you. And I thank you for editing this speech so well. <laughs> and all my friends and families everywhere that have supported me, and my, to my in-laws, Gene and John Salomon. So I thought I needed to come up here and be relevant and relatable. I'm a millennial, and you're millennials. Or so I thought. Until I researched to see you're part of Generation Z, or Zers as it might be referenced. If I could just have enough Harry Potter, Twitter, or other relevant references, then maybe you would listen and relate to me. But the fact is, it's not about age or relevance, as we already have so much in common. I do know, though, that both of our generations collectively sometimes get a bad rap for sometimes not working hard or wanting everything immediately. Uh, not having delayed gratification, not being willing to learn from our elders, needing our safe space, and only caring about ourselves and our self-centeredness with our selfies. But the truth is, as you guys know, selfies, it's all about finding your angle. <laughs> now, some of those tags we've probably earned, and some I honestly think we are just human behavior, sometimes of all ages. And I asked my friend Tom to ask his daughter, Allie, who's a junior in college, what would she want to hear? And one of the things she told me really stuck out. I think she nailed it when she said to encourage you to find solutions to problems in our world through creativity and innovation. I see the creativity of this generation and also what I've seen is a generation of young people willing to show empathy. And what I've seen is a generation of young people willing to serve and care for those less fortunate than themselves. I've seen a generation of young people who understand that it's okay to have differences and respectfully disagree. And I think we can all learn so much from you. I get to work with some recent college graduates, some Flagler graduates, on my team every day, and they are sharp and so conscious. One of them is here supporting a friend today. Santi, where are you? He didn't know I was going to do that. <laughs> but uh, this young man, uh, we actually met at Business Week, an alumni event, and I gave him my card, and he persistently pursued me. The next thing you know, he's part of our core team. I had the chance to meet two of you over the past two weeks unplanned while out in St. Augustine. A young man named Jason from New Jersey who plans to pursue a career in grant writing and a young lady named Adriana from Guatemala. I can tell you by my brief interaction with both of you that this is a special graduating class and our future is so bright. I asked them both, what do you need to hear from me as you take this next step? And they told me, this is not the end, it's the beginning. And in Jason's case, he just found out what he really wanted to do this year. So it's never too late to find your passion. And I can tell you, Jason, that's true for the rest of your life. And Adriana said, tell us a good story. So I tried. When I graduated 11 years ago, I sat right in the seat in this building, about halfway back where you guys sit. And we had some sense, but we really didn't know in the spring of 2008 that we were entering what would come to be called the Great Recession. At least I didn't. I wasn't sure what was next for me as I sat in your seat. There was so much uncertainty swirling in my mind and heart. While I felt uncertainty, I at least knew the growth I had experienced starting as the nervous freshman, profusely sweating during speech class, to be a senior who was president of the Society for Advancement of Management and winning the national championship with Professor Luke Prize. I'm so grateful I grew in my leadership and confidence. I'm asked frequently how someone with a business degree ends up in such a niche field 
where daily conversations consist of technical phrases such as tensile strength, fracture toughness, and coefficient of thermal expansion. The reality is I just wanted to say that to sound smart. <laughs> For me, getting into the specialty metals business, specialty metals and steel business, starts with Flagler College. Literally. Would you believe it was because someone hit a hole in one on a golf course? If you hit a hole in one at the Slammer and Squire, you get your name on a brick. And that brick allowed a Pennsylvania steel executive to reconnect with his high school teacher and golf coach decades after losing touch. The name on the brick was that of Professor Steve Vogel who recommended me to Eric Lamb, the former steel executive who's here today. Steve told him, I've got just the guy for you, and so it began. Flagler College is a large part of how I get from that seat with uncertainty and doubt and fear standing before you a decade later at the helm of one of the fastest growing companies in America. Ultimately though, for me, it's by the grace of God. I failed so much and I still do. I ran from taking risks and I still do. At times I lacked confidence. Growing up at times I was ashamed of my name. I thought, why do I have a woman's name, Vivian? I was named after my grandfather who died in 1958. I was born in 1986. I was born on his birthday, January 12th. I didn't realize I would have a special connection to him. I'm told that he was an entrepreneur in his own right, a great agriculturist and landowner in Jamaica, owning many dairies. I only have two possessions of his. A picture of him during a radio interview after a cattle show and a bronze trophy cup. My father recently told me that to win that cup, you had to win that show three times in a row. When I started Vesta Metal sitting in a 100 square foot office with no inventory, no warehouse, no staff, I was just trying to broker some metal. It was a struggle getting anyone to sell to me or getting anyone to buy from me. Finally, we got one of our first small orders and the mill that supplied the material was Kaiser Aluminum. That helped give me momentum. I was in my office earlier this year and I started looking at my grandfather's cup more intently. It was an old cup, faded, but I was shocked when I noticed the name of the cup of the company that sponsored the cattle show. It was Kaiser Aluminum. That helped my grandfather gain momentum. It was the same company, 63 years apart, I, who had connected me to my namesake. <laughs> Graduates, don't apologize for who you are. Don't let stress and pressure consume you. I've struggled in this area even to the point of the occasional stomach ulcer as young as when I was 16. It's okay to say you're not okay and to reach out for help. There could be no braver action. Brittany and I were living in Indianapolis and life was good. We had our first child and we're both growing in our career. I was headed to graduate school or so I thought, but couldn't shake the desire to pursue my God-given calling of entrepreneurship and improving people's lives. As grad school door the grad school, school door closed, I tried to raise capital and buy a small distrib metals distribution company back in Florida, but that failed. So I tried to buy another metals distribution company after that, even to the point of quitting my job and moving back to close the deal. That drastically failed. I was jobless with no direction. Going the startup route was never the plan, at least not my plan. It was hard and painful but we decided to start new, even knowing we would be the youngest company in our industry by far. A year into operating, we were out of cash and failing miserably. That hurt. I interviewed at Target in hopes of picking up some extra income as our second child was due very soon. I had to tell Brittany, I won't be taking a paycheck anymore. It looked like it was time to shut down this dream. Shortly after, an envelope showed up in the mail. It was one of those blank envelopes that looks like spam, junk, I opened it and it was a check for $7,691.10 from Chase Bank. It looked real, so I called the bank and they verified <laughs> that when we moved away from St. Augustine in 2012 and sold our home, we were overpaid on our insurance and taxes and escrow for some time while we owned the home and they had been trying to reach me for three years. My response to them was, we've been banking with you the entire time. <laughs> That's when I learned to replace the words luck, happenstance, and chance in my vocabulary with purpose, providence, and God's sovereignty. Graduates, just when you're on the verge of giving up, sometimes all you need is a little more time to make things happen. That gave me the boost I needed to persevere. President John Calvin Coolidge once said, nothing in this world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than an unsuccessful man with talent. 
Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education alone will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. You must find your purpose. For me, my purpose has been rooted in the eternal faith and hope I've placed in Christ Jesus. When the days have been hard, He sustained me. You know, I fail daily, but I strive to live by a verse in the Bible, which is Micah 6, 8, and it reads, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Act justly, love mercy, walk humbly. Principles to live by. I've seen so much of these principles in the people here at Flagler, and that's why it's so special to me. Flagler College to me is Professor Steve Bogut taking time to make personal connections with the students. It's Dr. Mike Chester showing up at our office to check on one of my colleagues and his former students after our home of the Bahamas was devastated by Hurricane Dorian. It's Dr. Bill Abair hiring me and giving me my first chance after college. It's my brother J.T. Saucy traveling on multiple occasions to help me pack and unpack a U-Haul. It's Holly Hill and Laura Stevenson Dumas taking me to lunch when I was leaving the admissions office to wish me well. It's meeting a student when renting from a local enterprise rental car and hearing the impact Professor Tracy Upchurch has had on his future plans. It's Tammy Davenport sending me a card when I left admissions to wish me well. It's Coach Bo Clark having three sons when I arrived to St. Augustine and making me his fourth by the time I left. It's Dr. Proctor's willingness to lend me a book and give me advice. It's Vic Janey's dedication. It's Dr. Allison Roberts continuing to mentor a former student. It's Professor Paula Hollenchuk's encouragement. It's Margot Thomas always giving me an opportunity to be involved. It's former Professor Dr. Lauder's wisdom. It's Mike and Mimi Robertson's kindness. It's President and Mrs. Susan Joyner showing up unannounced at an award ceremony for me earlier this year with a group of Flagler friends. It's Jeff Davitt's friendship. It's Judd Damon's leadership. It's Dr. Ivan Kelly taking the time to send me a picture a picture home to my mom after I presented the senior class, class gift at my graduation. It's Lou and Patricia Prize's love they have shown me. It's the beautiful people. And so, it's the beautiful people. And so I'll end with 11 tenets I've learned over the past 11 years since sitting in that seat. Number one, embrace who you are, including your name. You are uniquely and wonderfully made. Number two, give yourself room to grow. Number three, your failures are not final, and you are not a sum of your past mistakes. Number four, persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. Number five, have faith. Number six, believe in the special foundation that Flagler College has given you. Number seven, find your purpose. A very wise man once told me, if you aim for nothing, you'll surely hit it. Number eight, when you have crappy values, you'll never have lasting joy. And if my values are shallow, my victories will be empty. Number nine, the amount of likes your social media posts receive, that doesn't define you. And number 10, and possibly most importantly, the Popeye's chicken sandwich never stood a chance against a Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich. <laughs> Number 11, aim to be rich, but rich in relationships. So if they call us the selfie generation, my friends, now's not the time to disappoint. Everybody get your pose. <laughs> Dr. Jordan, would you join me? In the great, in the words of the great philosopher, Post Malone, <laughs> they said I wouldn't be nothing. Now they always say congratulations. <laughs> Worked so hard, forgot how to vacation. They never had the dedication. People hate and say we changed and look we made it. Yeah, we made it. Congratulations. <laughs> And I'll end with this. As young children, my mother used to give us a blessing each night. 
one we now give to our children. And it goes like this. May, the, may God bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May he lift up the light of his countenance upon you. And may he give you his peace. God bless you, graduates. And God bless our beloved Flagler College. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bib. It's good to know I did get something right this year. I'm now privileged to and honored to award the Honorary Doctor of Laws degree to Mr. Bib Helwick. Dean Wolfick, would you please join me on the, on the podium uh, with Mr. Helwick. Viv, we are grateful for your participation today in our commencement ceremony. You have honored us with your presence and you've inspired us with your remarks. In recognition of your inspiring career as an entrepreneur and your contributions to professional and civic organizations, I am pleased and honored to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Laws. Congratulations. Because final grades are not due to the Office of the Registrar until the Friday prior to commencement, the names of our honor graduates do not appear in the printed program. Those students who have distinguished themselves with exceptional academic achievement today wear the red and gold honors cords. Students who have earned the cum laude distinction have an overall grade point average of 3.5 to 3.69. As your name is called, Will each student please rise and remain standing until all of these students have been acknowledged. Please hold your applause until all of these students are recognized. Chris Blanco, Kirsten Bodo, Adriana Cabezas, Elizabeth, uh, Kirsty Elizabeth Chick, Stephanie DiLorenzo, Megan Duby, Ryan Garcia, Dane Gerritsen, Abigail Holmes, Abigail Hoyt, Jacqueline Krimposki, Grace Looney, Andrea Luciano, Sasha Lute, Jordan Mark, Kristen Ogden, Shelby Pascal, Emily Pelletier, Abby Raber, Lauren Schroeder, Alexandra Spitz, Rosemary Thompson, Joshua Tricky, Julia Tropper, and Margaret Widener. Please join me in honoring these students. Please be seated. Students who have earned the magna cum laude distinction have an overall grade point average of 3.7 to 3.89. Will each student please rise and remain standing until all of these students have been acknowledged. Please hold your applause until all, all of these students are recognized. Noor K. Al Hussein, <laughs> Laura Alex, Jason Amado, <laughs> Madison Bailey, Sarah Bailey, <laughs> Jada Barnes, <laughs> Marissa Cecile, Quinn Forsch, Evan Goedia, Alexis Gunderman, Catherine Hamilton, Allison Hartman, Hannah Lawson, Ashley Metzler, Kaylee Perry, Alexis Ritter, Alyssa Royal, Samantha Tate, Christopas Tortoras, and Sierra Van Allen. Please join me in recognizing these people. Students who have earned the highest distinction, summa cum laude, have an overall grade point average of 3.9 to 4.0.
Will each student please rise and remain standing until all of these students are acknowledged. Please hold your applause until all of the students have been recognized. Lucy Madison Brooks. Robert Scott Covert. Please join me in honoring these students. In addition to the graduates with honors, Flagler College confers departmental awards for academic achievement. These awards are made by each individual academic department. Primary consideration for these awards is based on academic achievement. However, other contributing factors are considered. Awards are given by given selected members of the department who rank in the top 10% of the graduating class for the academic year. Some departments chose to make their awards in the fall semester, other departments elected to make their awards this spring. As the recipients' names are called, please rise and remain standing until all recipients have been acknowledged. Please hold your applause until all of these students have been recognized. For the Department of Behavioral Sciences, Noor Al Husseini and Alexis D. Ritter. For the Department of Business Administration, Marissa Nicole Cecil and Rosemary Z. Thompson. For the Department of Communication, Katherine Hamilton. For the Department of Education, Samantha Grace Gabarino Tate and Alyssa, Alyssa Renee Royal. For the Department of English, Madison Gordon. For the Department of Humanities, Lucy Madison Brooks, Robert Scott Cover, and Jason Amato. For the Department of Natural Sciences, Allison Rita Hartnett and Christopher Lewis Blanco. And for the Department of Visual Arts, Sasha Lute. Please join me in honoring these students. Please be seated. When this class enrolled at Flagler College, they attended a convocation ceremony where they held aloft a railroad spike. That spike symbolized not only the history of our namesake, Henry Flagler, it also symbolized your encouragement to these new students to begin their legacy. Today, after the graduates received their diploma from President Joyner, Ms. Margot Thomas, Director of Alumni Relations, and Dr. Sandra Miles, Vice President of Student Affairs, we will present them with a ceremonial spike to remind and encourage them to continue to create their own legacy. Will the graduates please rise and come forward to receive your diplomas. Graduates of the Flagler College Honors Program will be recognized first in today's ceremony. Members of Alpha Chi, the college-wide academic honor society are designated to the wearing of green and blue honor colored honor codes. Students who are members of honor societies from their academic majors are wearing cords or pins from those societies in their stoles. Veterans and those currently serving wear red, white, and blue colored honor codes. President Joyner, upon the recommendation of the faculty, I present to you these candidates with a degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts and Bachelor of Arts. Graduates of the Honors Program, Jada Barnes, magna cum laude. Lucy Madison Brooks, summa cum laude. Marissa Nicole Ciso, magna cum laude. Madison Elizabeth Gordon. Jordan D. Mark, cum laude. Abby Renee Raver, cum laude. Alexis Diane Ritter, magna cum laude. Rosemary C. Thompson, cum laude. Woo! 
Sierra, Danielle Van Allen, magna cum laude. This concludes the graduates of the honors program. Ross M. Adolfi. Noor K. Al Husseini, magna cum laude. Laura E. Alex, magna cum laude. Jason R. Amato, magna cum laude. Theodore Dimitri Ananyadis. David Austin Andrews. Madison Alexa Bailey, magna cum laude. Sarah Margaret Bailey, magna cum laude. Vianne Bonuelis. Ariel Barish. Raven Elizabeth Barrera. Brandon Michael Bates. Adam Baina. Keaton Thomas Bignell. Christopher Lewis Vanco, cum laude. <laughs> Mel Broughton. <laughs> Seth Tom, Seth James Burden. <laughs> Adriana Cabezas, cum laude. Mark Joseph Campbell. Mark William Calder. Kirstie Elizabeth Chick, cum laude. Christopher M. Cosmato. Robert Scott Covert, Summa Cum Laude. Richard P. Kramer, Jr. Julianne Curiel. Gregory Allen Curtis. Aaron Elizabeth Davis. Joseph Anthony DeBella. Timothy James Dehan. Richard C. Donaferio. Madison Kirsten do video. Megan Elizabeth Duby. Santa Savannah, excuse me, Nicole Dunn. Jasmine Elizabeth English. Rachel Elizabeth Faircloud. Dakota Flood. Quinn R. Porsche, magna cum laude. Sarah Rose Friedman.
Alberto Gallo Bueller. Silvio Ignacio Gallo. Evan Goitia, Magna Cum Laude. Zoe Jane Gombar. Blake Green. Alexis Rose Gunderman, Magna Cum Laude. Catherine Joy Hamilton, Magna Cum Laude. Kenneth Almazar Ham. <laughs> Maxwell Thomas Hansen. Summer Lynn Hartenstein. <laughs> Allison Rita Hartnett, Magna Cum Laude. Kaylee Hellum. Okay. Abigail Rebecca Holmes, Cum Laude. Oh. Abigail Catherine Hoyt, Cum Laude. Oh. Morgan Adam Hughes. Oh. Heather Page Hunter. Colton Zachary Jacobs. Zachary Ryan Jock. Kaylin Andrea Johnson. John Austin Kearney. Coltrane Wynn Kirkland. Kristen Elizabeth Clyer. Brendan Clem. Clayton William Kovacs. Jacqueline M. Kromkowski, cum laude. Raquel Nicole Kulak. Virginia Ruth Lawrence. Anna Faith Lawson, magna cum laude. Marianella Leon. Yat Chun Jerry Ling. Grace Caroline Looney, cum laude. Andrea Virginia Luciano, cum laude. Sasha Hunter Luke, cum laude. Zachary Angelo Manrique. Brooke Pasillo Maturano. Luke Michael McCann. Blue McGill. Brittany Ty McLemore. Marin E. Nitzer. Taylor Madison Mills. Nazreen Moharnessy. Caitlin Erin Mollahan.
Natalie Brooke Montez. Tatum Lee Morgan. Kayla Alexandria Morell. Lucinda Emma Napoli. Rodrigo Javier Navarro Toronto. Zachary Joseph Nichols, and abstention. Jabalani Odor Uino. Emily Morgan Pelletier, from Lowry. Camilla Michelle Perez Rivera. Jessica Marie Peterson. Rodrigo Portillo. Alyssa Renee Royal, magna cum laude. Austin Edward Sanchez. Lauren Lynn Schroeder, cum laude. Thomas Lee Simone. Zachary William Smith. Megan Nicole Sonderman. Alexandra Joy Spitz, cum laude. Barbara Lane Swales. Jillian Margaret Tamillo. Samantha Grace Gabarino Tate, magna cum laude. Angelica E. Terrio. Matthew Wright Thornton. Joshua M. Tricky, cum laude. Julia Elizabeth Tropper, cum laude. Sydney Jamison Tucker. Alexandra Van Grafland. Bethany Ariana Waldron. Joseph Anthony Way. <laughs> Tiffany Liana White. Will the candidates for the bachelor's degree please rise? <laughs> candidates, upon the recommendation of the faculty, and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Flagler College, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts and or the Bachelor of Fine Arts with all the rights, honors, and privileges thereunto appertaining. I extend to each of you my warmest congratulations and best wishes on your milestone achievement. Congratulations.
Please join me in congratulating the class of 2019. Thank you. Now that you are alumni of Flatiger College, Miss Michelle Pruitt Vagan, class of 2001, wishes to extend to you a welcome from your alumni association. Michelle? Well, good morning. Flagler College class of 2019, it is my absolute honor and joy to address you today on behalf of your now alumni association. I was very nervous about giving this speech as Flagler is a passion of mine and I really wanted to do the college and the alumni association proud. So I asked the powers that be, what do you absolutely need from me today? Their orders, very short and very powerful. So I thought, and I really decided to focus on the powerful part, because I think that's what you really need today. I think you will all be moved, so if I can just have your attention for about the next 20 or 30 minutes, I think you'll leave fulfilled and satisfied. I'm totally kidding. It'll only take a moment. I have a feeling that some of you are ready for the celebrations to begin. It's true. On this very big and glorious day, looking back upon my graduation that I feel like happened just yesterday, I sat right where you are today. I had the joy of walking across King Street in my cap and my gown with all of my fellow graduates right into this gymnasium. And here's the one thing that I wish somebody had said to me. Stop. I want you to all stop for just a moment. Take a deep breath. Maybe even close your eyes for a minute but be very still and take this moment in. I want you to feel the love of your family and friends. I want you to feel the pride as it pours in from the people around you. I want you to savor it and relish it and file this moment away as a very happy moment in your life. You deserve it. We are so very, very proud of you. And so much of what happens today will actually become a blur in your memory of time. So take this moment. You've earned it, cherish it, and relish it. However, lucky you, I don't have to stop. You give a girl a microphone, I'll just keep going. But I did promise I'd be brief, so here's one more thing I'm ready to say. Welcome to the coolest and most loving family that you will ever be a part of. From this moment forward, you are part of the Flagler College alumni family. And I can imagine today that that might not mean very much to you. It maybe has no relevance, no perspective. So I'm going to give you my personal experience with this family. Some of you might have been here and some of you might remember when not so long ago Hurricane Matthew decided to visit St. Augustine. I was seven months pregnant with my first child and my husband and I were evacuating and we didn't know if we would have a business or a home to return to. Upon our return, we uh, quickly realized that our business had been destroyed. We had water come through that was about waist high and had taken everything. Initially, I thought this was something that we could handle. But about an hour into the cleanup, I realized that this was way bigger than two people. So I shot out a text to a few of my friends that said, if you know of anyone with free hands today, we could really use some help. Within about 30 minutes, I had a crew at our front door, and every single person that showed up was from Flagler College. Every single one of them. And they showed up every day for over a week until our business was clean, dry, restocked and filled, and ready to be operating again. To say that they worked their butts off would be a drastic understatement. It was dirty, it was disgusting, it was probably toxic, but they came every day and they gave everything that they had. Flagler College alumni, their faculty, staff, and students literally saved my business. Four years ago when you started on this journey, you started building your Flagler family. And today your Flagler family just got bigger because now you're part of the alumni family as well. We know how to have fun, we know how to give, and we have a passion for Flagler College. But most of all, more than anything, we're here for you. 
So as you journey ahead, please stop by your alumni house that's now right here on campus, reach out, take advantage of the relationships that you've made here, and please use us as a resource. I would also like to challenge you to stay plugged in. You will find it to be very helpful, but most of all, you'll find it to be enriching. You will find that you make many new friends and make many new people in your life that you love to give to you and that you'll love to give back to. One day before you know it, you'll be me a few years later, looking at a room full of fresh, eager, and excited faces, so ready to start their journey ahead. Today, you are bound to an amazing family, and in turn, the future of Flagler is bound to you. I would like to encourage you to give of your time and of your talent, and maybe one day when it's right, of your treasure, and I'd like you to give so that the amazing Flagler legacy continues on. Most of all, no matter what happens and wherever you may journey in the world, please know that you always have your Flagler family cheering you along for every single step of the way. So on behalf of your alumni association, welcome, congratulations, and God bless you. Thank you, Michelle. As we come to the close of this commencement ceremony, it's time to bid you a fond farewell. May your years ahead be filled with happiness, success, and a sense of fulfillment in all that you do. You go with the pride of this institution, with our admiration and with our respect, and with our hopes and aspirations for you in the future. And while we say goodbye for now, I hope to see you all at alumni events in the future. Flagler College will always be your college home. To help celebrate your college home, I'm excited to invite you to participate in a group singing of our alma mater. Our alma mater was written by Professor Casey, the music, and Professor Craig Wolfel, the words, in honor of the college's 50th anniversary and is dedicated to the memory of John D. Bailey Sr., former trustee. The words are, uh, the alma mater is in your program. I would ask everyone to please rise as we sing our alma mater together, led by the Flagler College Chamber Choir. Please remain standing throughout the recessional. I now call on Father Voorhees to offer our benediction. May God's blessing follow you all as you find new journeys to travel. May you walk safely along the pathways of your dreams. 
May the Spirit's gentle hand guide the decisions you will make and the passions that you will follow. May your hearts and lives always reflect love and truth, and may hope be a light within you that you carry into each new day. Amen. Thank you.